Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. Now we have one question from France from Anne-Laure. She's a neuroscientist and she's asking, is it important for you that NLP be recognized by science? Well, I think it's absolutely more important that we recognize neuroscience and what it's provided us. Uh, I read an uh, enormous number of uh, journal articles on neuroscience. Some of them I don't find useful for me, and some of them I find very useful things that I think, you know, whether science ever recognizes NLP. Some years ago, uh, Robert Diltz called me in Santa Cruz and told me he was with some gentlemen from the American Academy of Science. And they came in and said, if we stop developing things for three years, they could do research and find out if NLP was a science. And I looked at them all and said, let me save you the time. It's not a science. Uh, you know, modeling is, is, is a particular set of mathematical skills by which you build a calculus and compete, compute See, Milton did a certain number of things in his life, and, but you know, a lifetime is only so long. And even though he did a tremendous number of really unique things, by building a calculus, we could co compute what else he would have been likely to do. And that's what I did with Virginia. That's what I did with Fritz Perls. That's what I did with all of those people. We built a calculus that allows us to find out what they did and figure out what else they might have done so we can find out what else is there. Even with NLP, at a certain point, I took the calculus and flipped it over upside down and created design human engineering, which has almost the opposite tenets. Instead of using elegance as the foundation of modeling, it, it uses inelegance so that you find out how many things you can use to amplify something instead of what the minimum number of things to get by is. Uh, NLP is about eliciting a strategy and installing it, design human engineering, you figure out, uh, you make a strategy that not only is functional, but it's also fun and exciting. Uh, it's the difference between making a, you know, a $200 million movie and, and, and making one that only costs $100,000. they are both good movies, one has the minimum and the other takes every bell and whistle you can think of and sticks it in. Uh, uh, our ability to look at neuroscience and find out what it offers us and to recognize that at the bottom of everything we do is neurology. Now, the question is, how do we use consciousness, our own consciousness, to influence our neurology so that it serves us better and provides us greater freedom and greater competence and greater joy as human beings?